have a problem. It's bad enough that you're trying to get yourself a house, trying to buy a short sale, trying to buy a bank owned REO. Now you have to worry about how are you going to be paying your buyer's agent for representation. Let's go over how it used to be. First of all, I want to make something clear. Commissions were never a set price. A buyer, a seller can always negotiate their commission. It all depends, obviously, the real estate broker or agent that you're interviewing, what their services are, what their marketing is, what their qualifications are. Are you clicking together? Do they have experience? Are they a good negotiator? Do they know the market? Can they help you? Are they honest? Are they trustworthy? And I can name a million different things. However, the set commission price with all the crazy bait click information that you hear all over the place is natural. Let's go over how the compensation used to work. So we're not talking about commission because that's negotiable, but we are talking about the process. So a listing agent will determine the total commission for the entire sale of the house and what portion of that compensation will be offered openly on the multiple listing service to a buyer's agent shall the buyer's agent have a ready, able, willing, qualified buyer that buyer and the seller through their realtors representations will negotiate and come to a meeting of the minds. That buyer's agent saw right away on the MLS listing the compensation that they had. Now, some buyer agents would still have an exclusive buyer agency contract with their buyer client and say, okay, well, this is my fee for helping you achieve your goals. And assuming that that fee is going to be the same on the MLS for the home that we're gonna end up buying, then it's covered. You don't have to pay me. It's already covered by the seller size. However, there's also another option. Some buyers and buyer agents made an agreement that the difference between what a seller offers versus what their contract states would have to be covered by the buyer. In other cases, the full amount would be the responsibility of the buyer and then the buyer's agent would not be able to collect anything from the seller side or if they would then they have to disclose that prior to to each party in the transaction but i like to think that we realtors are not pigs so i don't believe that people would do that now we're talking mostly about distressed properties properties in pre-foreclosure status or short sale status and bank owned foreclosures that are REO, which are already owned by the bank. So how is that working? This was working where the homeowner who's facing pre foreclosure enlisted the services of a listing agent and they negotiated the terms and conditions, including the real estate fees within the listing contract. At that point, the listing agent would do the same thing. They would determine with the seller what percentage of that entire fee would be shared with the buyer's agent if the buyer's agent comes with a qualified, able, ready, and approved buyer and they close, that was the compensation. Foreclosure, bank owned, same thing. The bank had agreed with the listing agent, they offer X amount of commission for the entire transaction and the listing agent would post in the contract on the MLS, what would be the compensation for a buyer's agent? Even at that point, we're dealing with bank in both situations, the foreclosure bank REO and the short sale pre-foreclosure. The bank decides what they are willing to pay. So many times I've seen the bank will say, okay, well, I know you listed the property for X amount commission, but you've given me a contract and you also have the buyer. Well, I'm not willing to pay as much. I'm only willing to pay this much. Same thing on pre foreclosures and short sale. So as you can see, the pattern is that the seller, whether it's an individual corporation, bank owned, or a bank that is holding the note and now is working to approve the sale on the short sale, they can negotiate the commission, right? Is an individual seller. They can nego negotiate the commission. So what really changed, right? Now we're thinking about like, 
Oh my gosh, you're a buyer and now you're trying to buy a distressed property. It's bad enough with all of these things that you're getting yourself into and now you have to like pay your buyer's representative, buyer's agent out of pocket. I don't believe it's really the case. The only major, well, there's two major changes that happen. One is that a listing agent is no longer allowed to post anywhere on the multiple listing what a buyer's compensation is or if there is one because the seller is not obligated to pay a buyer's agent. And two, a buyer must have a buyer's agency agreement with the buyer's agent who is helping them with the purchase. And we're not even talking about who's paying who. It's just that at this point, if there was before, some realtors did it, some didn't do it, some states did it, others didn't do it. But now to work with a buyer's agent, you must sign a buyer's brokerage agreement. Do I think it's a bad idea? No, I actually think it's a great idea because if a buyer's agent is going to give you their time, dedication, resources, commitment, why wouldn't they want you to sign a buyer's agency agreement where you know exactly what you're going to get from that agent, you know exactly what their duties and responsibilities are, why wouldn't you? The issue is the compensation now because if a seller says, well, I don't want to offer any compensation to a buyer's broker, now what happens to you as a buyer? Regardless of whether you're buying a foreclosure or a pre-foreclosure short sale or just a traditional type of a transaction, you will have a contract with your buyer's agent that's going to state all of the duties and representation that you will receive. But in addition to that, you will negotiate with the buyer's agent their compensation fee. I'm not going to get into how this could be implemented implemented in multiple different ways to come up to a solution because we are talking about the truth about buying foreclosed. As a buyer that's looking to buy and as a seller that's looking to sell, it's very simple. They're trying to make it complicated. They're trying to create confusion like they always do. They're trying to make things look bad. But let me ask you a question. As a seller, are you going to reduce your price because you're like, oh, poor buyer. Now they have to pay their representation agent a set amount of a fee on top of what they pay. Oh, I feel so bad for them. Are you going to feel like that? Hell no. Even if you're the great person in the world, the best intentions in the world. In the end of the day, the reason you hired a professional to sell your house is because you want to create a hype that's going to give you the most amount of money and the best terms possible, right? Exactly. But for the buyer, if you decide that you are going to go and use a listing agent because you can't afford or you don't want to pay a buyer's agent, what are you really saving? Because you have no representation. Now, a lot of people say, well, oh, well, the listing agent can be a dual agent. Can they? Yes. But let's look at it logically and realistically. So if I have two clients on the same house, one is a seller, one is a buyer, my obligation is to my client. So can both of these sides, buyer and seller, can be a client and have the same duties, responsibilities? No. Hell no. How can I get the best terms and price for my seller client and at the same time get the best price and the best terms for my buyer client on the same house? Now, if you think that makes sense to you, then you comment below and tell me how the hell this makes sense because it does not make sense to me at all. But again, a seller can say, hey, I'm paying for my representation. Let the buyer pay for theirs. Yeah, I agree. You can look at it this way, but at the same time, properties has been selling at the numbers that the service fees for the transaction for, for the two sides of the realtors that are involved are included in that price already. So the value of the homes that you see when an appraiser comes in and appraises the property for the bank or a professional realtor comes in and looks at the data and gives you a recommendation of what your house is currently worth, those numbers are already included in that. 
So I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just saying that this is going to be an issue. And I think the biggest issue is, is because it's so simple, yet because of the crazy noise and everybody's like, oh, no more real estate. Oh, no more buyer coming. Oh, buyers are gonna have to pay. That's what creates confusion in the market. And the only people that really suffer and get hurt from stuff like this, misinformation, misleading, misguiding, is you guys, the consumer. Because in the end of the day, we will, as the real estate industry, my goal is to always help you achieve what's the most important to you, especially when it comes to getting you out of foreclosure and avoiding evicting you at the house in the middle of the night with children and dogs, kids. We will find a way, but until that happens and until we're able to one by one explain this to you guys, it's going to be tough for you. And that's the sad part about it because people who don't understand the complexities of real estate in general, Everything that's involved from a seller side, from a buyer side, and the amount of work that's required to come to a successful transaction and mainly putting a roof on our head and our family, right? They should be prohibited to falsely put information out there to create chaos. And I think that's the part that pisses me off the most because in the end of the day, the market will show us what is beneficial to each and every client, right? They might be a seller who by not offering a buyer's broker compensation, not have any negative impact. And there might be a seller that if they don't offer compensation, they might lose a lot more than what that compensation would be. Not to mention that when each party has their own representation, the responsibility and liability kind of ends there. It's not flowing to the other side. So that's something very important to also think about. But I think I have faith that we, the professional realtor, will be able to put in perspective without steering anybody to do one thing or another is the, the idea is to really as with any transaction that we do is helping you understand different kind of scenarios and how they will impact the results and looking at what is the end result that you want to accomplish and how each decision that you will make in the process will affect that goal and I think the same is happening here so stay tuned I mean if you have any questions I would love to hear from you if you have any comments about it on how you feel about it what your thoughts about this what's going on I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you need help if you're facing foreclosure or I know anybody who is don't hesitate reach out to me um that's my goal I want to help as many homeowners keep their home and that's what this channel is all about and I am looking forward to read your comments like this video share subscribe and I will see you on the next one